Welcome back to part five of Revive the Body. Today we're going to be talking about pressing up of overhead. We're going to be talking about the full extension of your muscles and why it's important to feel the lockout of the muscles. If you haven't seen the first four episodes, click the link right up there. It'll connect you to the playlist and just watch through those in order. They do build on each other. So definitely make sure that we're checking those out before you jump onto this one. Cool. All right. So we talked about, uh, you know, creating that mind muscle connection. We talked about the body being stacked and mobile and stable joints. We talked about the push and the pull of the muscles to make balance into our body. And also talked about how to free up some of the psoas and the ankle, which are huge tight spots in people's uh, body just due to the movement that they're doing or lack of movement that they're doing throughout the day. Maybe the lack of awareness is what's going on. But today we're going to really focus on the lockout of our joints and feeling the, 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 the joints lockout. The big thing for this is that when we lock out our joint, we create like the even push and pull. So if Nadine faces towards me and she's going to, if she's going to raise her hand above her, her right arm above her head, and it doesn't actually get, yeah, yeah, it doesn't lock out. If it's not locked out, what's happening is we're having more of a contraction onto this bicep while this tricep is not an even dispersal. So with this, it's slightly bent. This is small, this is long. So this is gonna be strong, this is gonna be weak. Now, if she fully locks out that arm, what's gonna happen is we're gonna fire that tricep and we're gonna fire that bicep. Without fully locking out, go back to the bend, we'll be loading and doing extra work on this bicep. And that bicep tendon does cross over. You bring that arm by the side of your body. That bicep tendon does cross over past the elbow. A lot of people don't realize. And it attaches um, on more of the forearm. And when we have that, we can get a little golfer's elbow or tennis elbow kicking in. And then we're always like, man, I can't get rid of this. Especially for all those people who do a lot of barbell work and they do a lot of pull-ups and just in that pronated grip and not taking the time to do supination. We're keeping that bicep under a lot of tension. And in this case, it's just building up irritation, like a, almost like tendonitis into the forearm. So if we could focus on trying to make sure we fully lock out the movements, we're gonna see that we can relieve a lot of that tension into the elbow and into the shoulder, as well as the body feeling a little bit better. So one way that we want to do that, we're gonna pick up a pair of dumbbells. One way to help us start feeling the full lockout is going through tempo training. And we're huge fans of that as well, too, because it forces you to slow down, but it doesn't take away the burn of your muscles. It doesn't take away that mind-muscle connection from being built. And it actually usually is. It's a little bit tougher, and no one really likes doing tempo. Actually, I love doing tempo. Let me rephrase that. Not that you don't like doing it. It's just a little bit tougher to do rather than trying to go through that max weight. So if we take that time going with a lighter weight, we're going to start off with just a, a strict press. So she's going to bring those up onto the shoulders. And then what we're going to do is just push those arms all the way up to the air, the sky. We're going to lock the elbows out and we could even go a little bit further and raise those shoulders, but she's already pretty raised, which is awesome. So now we're getting the lock out of the shoulder and lock out of the elbow. Then we can just slowly bring that back down. And I'm a big fan of going to 90 degrees, pause right there. And then we're going to drive back up and feel that lock out. Now bring that back down. If we have her do these real quick and do them without the lockout, if we do them real quick, sometimes you'll see that her elbow isn't locked out. If we slow them down, pressing up, locking out, and then slowly coming back down, pressing back up and driving it back out, we can feel that almost lockout of the elbows and bring that down. I'm gonna put those, uh, put those on the ground. But it doesn't just actually rely on, or just doesn't retain just to the elbow. Everything and every joint, we wanna do the same thing. So if we're doing a kettlebell swing, and I'm gonna sure have her do this, we're gonna do a fast kettlebell swing without the lockout. And it might feel like you're locking your butt out, or maybe you're just squeezing your glutes, but you're not fully locking the knees out. You're gonna see a big difference in the way that we swing that kettlebell. So if she does a kettlebell swing, or a few of them, and she doesn't lock the knees out fully all the way, she could still squeeze the glutes and lock the glutes out. And kind of what happens is we start leaning back when we get into that. Yes, right there. So the knees aren't locked out, good and relax. The knees aren't locked out, but her hips are locking out. And what it's causing is some extra extension of the spine pushing onto those discs of the lower back. And we do not want that to happen. 
So if we take this kettlebell swing, do the same thing, we're gonna lower the height of the, of the kettlebell swing. It could be super low. And what we're looking for is feeling those knees get that full lockout. When we feel that lockout, we should feel all the quad muscles firing in that, feel some tension up onto the hips, especially when we're grabbing the glutes or engaging the glutes. So she's gonna do the same exact thing. And now she's gonna focus on a less of a height and also feeling the lockout of the knees. So we're gonna be a little bit slower as well. And she's getting a lot of power, not hyperextending. And then she could speed that process up. And I can only do a kettlebell so fast, so she doesn't need to go too quickly. But start off slower, feel the muscles lock out, and then you're gonna speed that up. The same thing with limit your range of motion. If we're having a hard time with like that press again. So if we're having a hard time getting that elbow lock out, we're gonna go back to the press again. If we're having a hard time getting that elbow to lock out, sometimes one elbow will lock out faster than the other. Um, if we are having that, we can kind of sit in the top range of motion of that movement. So she's gonna bring those dumbbells back all the way up overhead. We're gonna get the lockout position. She's gonna feel the triceps fire, raising those up. Then all she's gonna do is break the elbows two to three inches, bringing them down and then drive back up quickly and feel that lockout. Break the inch down a couple inches, drive straight up. Feel that lockout, there we go. Getting a little crack, freeing up some space in the body. Good, and relax. Now I know we talked about this, I and mean, you put those down. I know we talked about this like in the shoulders, but look at this with every single movement that you do. The next time that you're hitting a workout, purposely go into it to see if your body is locking out. That means you might have to slow that workout down drastically. You might have to just almost feel like you're, if everyone around you, if you're working out in a group class and everyone around you is almost lapping you and what you're doing, it's okay. Your focus is to pay attention to what your body is. So that means you're going to kind of like tune that music out. You're going to really focus on what's going on in the body. You're going to feel those legs locking out and you're going to be able to generate more power within your body. You're going to have more balance of the push and pull muscles of your body. And at the same time, you might relieve a little bit of irritation, whether it's golfer's elbow or tennis elbow, whether a little shoulder irritation, knee, or even into the back. Because like we showed in that kettlebell swing, if we could still lock out the hips and not lock out that back, and then what happens is that hyperextension so we can get that kettlebell up versus getting that full lockout, full extension, and getting that kettlebell up. One thing that I will give you a tip, if you are doing some sort of swing, are doing uh, some uh, clean coming up to the shoulders, or going from that ground to shoulder movement, I like to think about slightly creating a contraction of a sit up when I get to the top position. It seems almost counterintuitive in the aspect of I'm trying to fully extend the body, especially in a kettlebell swing or in a clean, we're trying to fully extend, but most of us get lazy or their breath is really high. So we don't keep this tight. We don't keep our core engaged. And when we don't do that, especially because we're breathing heavy, our chest is going out and in, we start getting cleans that end up leaning back. So if you take that time that when you extend in, whether it's a kettlebell swing or a clean, and we just do a slight little sit up of the upper body crunching down, think of a string from the belly button to the center of the sternum, and we're just shortening that just a tad. That's it, that's all we're doing. This type of movement will help protect a lot of that back. So I'm gonna have Nadine demo, demo two. She's gonna demo one where she's hyperextending the back with full lockout. So she's gonna fully extend those knees, squeeze the glutes, and she's gonna lean back a little bit to get the kettlebell swing up there. That's not what we want. And the second version we're gonna show is she's gonna do this kettlebell swing and when she gets to the top, she's just gonna kind of do a little bit of a crunch. You'll see the, the, the upper body almost move slightly like this Why she's in a full lockout position and this is gonna engage a little bit more of the core. So let's start off with that bad rep or the most common rep that we see that people do. And see that hyperextension? So she's not vertical, she's leaning back into that position, good. And then what we're gonna try and do is change that up and now she's gonna add in a slight forward lean or slight sit up at the top of that movement. Good, so she's getting that lockout. You see how that back is not hyperextending? Good, and relax. So pay attention to that. There's tons of small little tips that we showed you over these five videos that'll drastically change the way your body performs on a day-to-day. -day. Our entire focus here is to teach you how to work out pain-free and improve your everyday function. 
That's what we want to do. If you guys got anything else specific, please let us know in the comments, shoot us a DM, make sure you like and subscribe, check out our other channels of social media, including our podcast, scroll through, there's tons of random information on there as well. Follow us on Instagram, Facebook, all the stuff. And we got some more videos coming out for you soon. Cheers.